welcome to Married at First Sight, Season 16, Episode 10. My name is Deborah, and I'm going to be doing a recap on all the individual couples. And at the end of this video, there will be links above my head, and you can click on it and watch the video for the next couple. Because we are on a day 19 and 25 of all the couples being married. So let's get into it. And now we're moving on to Clint and Gina. And oh my goodness, I guess we should call this a moving from frenemies to friend or from enemies to friend because uh, Clint and Gina made some headway. Clint and Gina made some headway and I'm happy for it. I don't think there's gonna be a love connection, but at least what we'll get out of this is we'll get two people walking away and not being enemies. We'll get two people who walk away and say, you know what, I respect who you are, I respect who you are as a person, and there's no harm or ill will we have towards each other. And you know what, when we go to reunions and things like this for Married at First Sight, at least we won't have to hate each other. That's the best we can get out of this uh, this whole season with uh, Clint and Gina. But they're not right for each other. They are not right for each other. And also what helps comes out of this is I hope Gina knows a little bit more about herself and realizes uh, that she thinks a lot of things about herself that just aren't true. And Gina's on the after party as well, so be sure to check out my video on the after party. But you know what? We got to look at this Gina Salon she was talking about. And people, oh, Gina. I mean, we're talking about the exaggerations that she that she goes out here. And is this just like one of these um, suites where the girl who puts my braids in has... You know, you go to those uh, suites where you walk in. It's a real big building, but you walk in and the different stylists have a small mini suite. It's actually pretty nice. It's better than when you used to be able to be in the big rooms with a bunch of people and dealing with all the shenanigans of all the other um, people in the um, beauty salon. I do like the suites better, uh, but I don't know, Gina. You stretch the truth on this. this is, it's a salon, but you're in a suite in a salon. <laughs> it's a difference. I'm not downplaying it. I'm not saying nothing's wrong with it. But I tell you, Gina loves to exaggerate who she is, what she does, everything. It really is ridiculous. It really is ridiculous. But we got to see this little um, 200 square foot salon that uh, Gina has. And Clint says he's impressed. I'm not, Clint. I'm not. I'm not impressed when you tell me um, you got a big old salon and then I see your suite is 200 square feet. If you would have told me you have a suite, we would have been fine. But you know what? You done hyped yourself up so much. Now everything is just a disappointment. Just like I would have never called a Gina big or overweight or anything. But when you say you got a size 26 waist, then I'm going to have to talk about it. Stop it, Gina. Just stop it out here. Just stop it. I really don't even know if this was the right time for Gina to get married. Because Gina really, if you're good in a salon and you're so busy at work and got all this kind of stuff, maybe this wasn't the right time for you to get married. You know, because if now that's what you're going to use as your excuse, because I'm building a business and I'm and I'm building a salon, then you should have got married. That's unfair to Clint. That's unfair for you to come and get married at one of the most busiest times of your life. Then maybe you should have waited till you built the salon. I don't think it's fair for you to use that excuse for why you don't want to invest any time to get to know a person. But you know what? They just got, um, you know, they also got started off on such a bad foot very early on. Gina should have never started saying all that look stuff. She really shouldn't have. And the producers have been going around and asking all these couples, what do you rate them? What, what, what number do you give them? If anybody's watching these Married at First Sight's next seasons, next season I think they're in Denver, and then I hear they're going to be in Chicago. Chicago people, I know y'all ain't started filming. Uh, when the producers aren't asking you to rate your spouses, uh, don't go for it. Don't fall into the trap unless you want to be divorced. Don't fall. I don't care what you think of them. Don't say anything. Finally, Gina's starting to admit that maybe she has a little bit of us. Uh, you know, skeletons in her closet uh, with this childhood and, and maybe some of that lingers into her occurring with her daily life. Uh, you figure, Gina, of course it does. It does with all of us. So the fact that you uh, maybe didn't think it did, um, that's a problem. Maybe all of this moving around, more than likely Gina was poor. More than likely Gina grew up poor. So that's why she has this over need to succeed and that's why she uh, overinflates her wealth and overinflates her um, success. Because it's not like her success is, it's, it's okay. It's, no big, it's a good thing she's got a salon and everything. But you know what? Sometimes when people come from poverty or they come from real low economic conditions, you know, they do need to be celebrated for, for smaller things. Uh, but in that, she shouldn't be putting people down. She shouldn't be people, but not everybody started there. Not everybody started uh, from poverty. 
So when they look at Gina, she, her story, which really should be, I came from poverty and look at who I look where I am now. I started off a 300 pounds, but now I'm all the way down to whatever. Those are the stories she should be telling, not the stories that, um, you know what, she's rich and famous owning uh, salons. Don't tell that story because that story is fake. That story is a lie. Tell the other story. I came from a poor, humble background. Probably grew up in a trailer park in Tennessee. Now, I'm going to say it. She probably did. She probably grew up in a, a mobile home trailer park in Tennessee. And um, now she's built herself up to be at this point where she has a salon suite and on her way to the salon. That's the story she should be telling. That's a story of humility, humbleness, and that's actually a good story. But the story she likes to tell is one as if she's all this. Girl, tell the story that you lost 100 pounds. Tell, tell that story. That's a better story than a run around telling me you a size 26 and you're athletic. You're not athletic. Whew. Goodness, people. Gina. But Clint, on the other hand, a Clint, Clint's conversation with his mother, I liked it. I like Clint's conversation. It looks like they actually have a really good a healthy relationship. I thought his mother gave him some good advice. Um, it's too bad Gina's doing this, starting a business when she's first getting married. But I think Clint's mother's advice was really good that, you know, you do have to put your all in when you're getting, um, when you're first starting a new business. But that's also what you have to do when you're first getting married. So, I mean, you know, geez, you got to put your all in in your first couple of years of marriage as well. Forget the first year. Forget that stuff people tell you about your first year is the hardest. I know that's not true. It's not just the first year. So don't be thinking after the first year, uh, it should be easy street. Nope, nope, nope. Just like a business, just like a business is more than one year. Say a three to four. <laughs> three to four. But I was happy to see that Gina actually went out on a sailboat and discovered and learned something she had never done before. And um, opened her eyes to relax into something different. I like that. I like that. Um, they went to the rodeo. I can't believe they've never been to no rodeo in Tennessee. I go to the rodeo and I'm in California. The Bill Pickett Rodeo. Anybody else from California be going to that Bill Pickett Rodeo out here in California? Even us Californians go to rodeos and we ain't even in the country, the South. How did Gina grow up in Tennessee and never been in no rodeo? Probably because, like I said, she probably was poor and grew up in a trailer park. Didn't have no money to go to one. I don't, I'm telling you, Gina... Well, I hope Gina comes away from this whole thing of learning something. I really do. I hope she doesn't repeat the same mistakes. Same with Clint. Um, I hope Clint doesn't repeat the same mistakes because I do think Clint really wants to be married. I think a Clint is lonely. I think Clint really does want a wife. I think Clint really does want to share all these things with. And I'm sticking to my guns and saying, if Gina hadn't picked on Clint for that whole ginger thing, I don't think he ever would have talked about her weight. I really don't think that. I think he has some selfishness and self-centered to him, but I think it's something that Clint can get over because I'm really telling you, I'm really starting to like Clint a whole lot better than I did in the beginning. And I like uh, his attitude, even in this situation where he knows it's not going nowhere. The best that can come out of this is friends. He's willing to make the best of the situation. And he is actually the one carrying it and pulling Gina along on this journey. It really is. But anyway, uh, that's it between the two of them. Be sure to check out my other videos and I'll talk about you talk. <laughs> Be sure to check out my other videos and I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye.